Hi everyone, my name is Pablo Munoz Gomez. I'm a 3D concept and character artist, and I'm really excited to be here just to show you a bit of the workflow and the behind the scenes of my process. So for those of you who are not familiar with my work, let me just switch to my screen. Here we go. Uh, just to give you an idea of the type of uh, topics and themes that I gravitate towards. <laughs> uh, so a lot of creature character design, some creepy stuff. Um, I'm, you know, I like this type of uh, comic style renders, uh, characters, a bit of like, you know, animal creature type of thing. So there's a, a wide variety of things uh, that, I, that I tend to do. And one of the things that all of these works have in common, or most of them at least, is that um, they're using ZBrush as a starting point or just to create the basis for it. So uh, that's kind of like what I want to show you today, uh, my entire workflow from scratch, and hopefully uh, show you a bit of the rendering process as well towards the end. Aside from this type of work that I do, I also teach online. So I have an online academy called the 3D Concept Artist website. And this is where you can find more in-depth courses and, and workshops. So there's a few things here that you might find interesting. I also run the ZBrush Guides website. And this is just a, a resource website where you can find a lot of different tutorials, um, different resources like brushes, uh, materials, that sort of thing. And I also work on a monthly project and share the insights in my 3D snippets website. So this is kind of like a subscription-based website where it's kind of like being in a fly in the wall, uh, watching the, the entire process of how I create a specific um, a yeah, specific project or a specific character or environment and that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of like in a nutshell what I do. But let's go ahead and get started with the ZBrush workflow. All right, so we're going to work on a character or a creature more than a character, but it's a humanoid creature. Um, there are many different ways to approach the the production or the creation of an asset or um, anything in ZBrush really. But I'm just going to show you what I think or what I consider to be one of the, the best ways of setting up something from scratch. So I have a sphere in here. And as you can see, this is just a normal 3D sphere. And by the way, I'm using a custom ZBrush UI, but I'll show you where the tools are whenever I use something that's not, um, you know, obvious. <laughs> um, other than that, just so you know, because I, I, this is something that I get asked quite a bit in my in my online streams and, and my classes, this thing that I have here floating, it's called Epic Pen. And this is a tool that I use to explain different concepts or explain things along the way. So I'm just going to be using this to write on the screen. Um, but I know it's a question that gets asked a lot. So this is nothing to do with ZBrush, just letting you know that um, it's a, it's a separate software. So you might not find this in, Z, in ZBrush if you're interested. All right. So um, the basics of this workflow is just to use very simple geometric shapes like this uh, sphere here and create the basis of the character. So I use very um, a very limited tool set. So I have a custom UI, like I said, and I can just access the essential brushes. So I'm going to choose the move brush. And I like to play with AccuCurve. AccuCurve is under the brush palette, Curve and AccuCurve. So I can just go ahead and do this type of things. And you see the AccuCurve is what allows me to um, create this pointy effect. If I turn off AccuCurve, it's on the other side, you'll see it's a little bit more blobby in that sense. So um, the only reason I choose AccuCurve is so that I, in this stage, when I'm blocking things out, it's a lot easier, a lot faster to, uh, to emphasize certain volumes. So let me just undo that, turn back AccuCurve, and I'm going to enable symmetry so that I can work a little bit faster. All right, another thing that I'm going to use is the Gizmo 3D. So the Gizmo 3D is obviously the, the tool that allows you to move things. Um, you know, this is pretty streamlined version of a manipulator. So what I'll do is I'm going to open up my subtool palette so that you can see uh, all the different tools that I'm going to be using. And I'm going to start with the, with the head of this character. So let's go ahead and just move this up a little bit. And I think I'm just going to turn off the polyframe. So this is going to be the cranium of the top of the of the skull. Um, and let's go ahead and append something else. I'm going to append a cylinder and just select that from the subtool palette. There we go. And this is going to be the, the face of the creature or the character. Uh, it's kind of like, um, you know, the cylindrical shape. It, it's a good, it's a good shape to uh, determine kind of like the jawline. And maybe we can twist it a little bit like that and scale it in that in the in the x-axis uh, one thing that i forgot to to do is enable the symmetry so it's not symmetrical and this is one of the crucial things about the the workflow that i'm showing you that it's very organic so i'm don't be afraid of destroying and you know 
merging things together and deleting parts. Uh, it's all about the design uh, flow and just making sure that you are in that creative zone. And then after that, you can just fix it and, and polish it. So what I did here without enabling symmetry is not a big deal. I can just go to mirror and weld and then just mirror it so that I have symmetry enabled. That would be under the geometry palette, modify topology, mirror and weld for you. Um, and yeah, other than that, we can go ahead and hold control and shift to click on the brush palette and we can select something like the knife lasso or the knife curve, which I already have here in my custom UI. So I'm just going to select the knife tool and hold control and shift. And I'm just going to position this. You can hold the space bar to reposition this, um, this line. And on the shaded area, on the shaded line, that's what's going to be cutting through the model. So I'm just going to do that. You'll see it just cuts through the model. And I'm going to repeat the process around here just to get a nice chisel jaw type of thing. Um, and that's about it, really. Let's go ahead and continue the process. I'm going to append another cylinder. Select that cylinder, and this is going to be the neck of the creature. Like I said, it's going, I'm going to go for a more humanoid character, so I'm just, I'm just going to block out what a human would look like, uh, and then I'm just going to destroy it. But um, at least that gives you a bit of an insight into how to create a human character as well, in case you, that's kind of like your preference. Um, yep, so this is going to be the neck. You see, starting to look like something, even though so far there's no, uh, there's not like a clear distinction of what this is. Um, let's go ahead and append one more sphere. And I'm going to use a sphere just to set up the, the thorax or the, the torso. So in this case, I'm just going to squish that into the Z axis, maybe rotate that a little bit. So this is going to be mostly um, what you can see from the back like the back itself, and we can duplicate that, rotate that as well. Uh, by the way, I'm also having the um, perspective off so that I can, from this side, or from this angle, I can just move this and I know it's doing it on a specific angle. So this is going to be the, uh, the chest, <laughs> and that's it. I don't think we need to do more than that. Again, it's all about keeping it super simple in terms of the, the objects that, that we can use to block this out. Um, we can even take an existing mesh like the neck, for example, and duplicate that. And we can use this to do a bit of the abdomen, maybe scale it in the X axis. So anything that I'm doing at the moment, uh, as you can see, I'm not even using the move brush or anything yet. It's just manipulating the gizmo and the, and the very basic objects to to get a shape going. So this is my, my block out. All right, on top of this one, um, we're gonna obviously wanna have some, some arms. So uh, I just wanna show you a different way of creating or adding um, assets here or, or sub tools. So, so far I've just been using the duplicate and the append tool in here, but you can do other things. So for instance, uh, in the brush palette, we can click on the IMM primitives and this allows you to insert a bunch of different primitives. So for the shoulders, let's say I want to go for uh, something like this sphere. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to click anywhere. And it just adds that as, a, as an extra geometry. Right now, if I go into solo mode, you'll see that I just added those spheres to the cylinder. So what I'll do is undo that. And here I have this depth, which you can find on the brush palette. Depth which is this one right here. And that allows you to embed the meshes that you have in here a little bit more. So I'm going to push this down a bit more and click and drag. And one of the great things about this workflow is that this is pretty easy to do, right? You can also go to split. Let me go into solo mode as well. Um, as soon as you do anything with the insert meshes here in ZBrush, you will end up with an automatic mask, as you can see here. So I can just go to the split section, like I said, and go to split mask points. And that way we end up with a different set of tools or a different sub tool, sorry. All right, so let's bring in the Gizmo 3D. Um, we can just reposition this. If you want to scale this uh, on the local axis, all you have to do is enable local symmetry. Let me show you what that does. So without local symmetry, if I were to scale this from the center, Seabrush is just going to take the entire volume and scale it towards the center of itself. <laughs> so if you go to transform palette, um, it's this one right here. So that's what I have in my UI. I'm going to click on that and now I can scale on the local symmetry.
something like this. Again, just focus on the silhouette, on the on the main shapes. Don't worry too much about you know whether or not this looks like a, like a human. Uh, we'll we'll make sure that we we tweak that later on. All right. So um, now that I show you that tool or that method, let's go ahead and switch back to the move brush, just so that I don't accidentally add a new mesh. I'm going to append a cylinder very quickly. Do this type of stuff. And that's going to be the arm. And I like to um, I like to set up my characters kind of like in an A pose so that then I can you know work on a on a pose <laughs> that is more interesting later on um, a lot easier. Uh, another way that you can add more geometry is by holding Control and clicking and dragging when you have the gizmo. So if I want to duplicate this section, I can hold Control, click and drag, and you'll see I have a new piece and ZBrush automatically mask the rest. So I can use this set up like the forearm something like that and if you want to have more control over certain volumes let's say uh it, you know the forearm the the wrist is a little bit smaller than this area of the elbow something that you can do at this stage is click on the gear on the gear icon here and go to taper uh taper here and we can just go ahead and taper the arm a little bit and you can play around with the profile with this cone All right so that's a, a very quick and easy way to set up the arm um, let's clear the mask, control click and drag, and we can go ahead and select the this <laughs> the, the, deal, the deltoid, and we can just select it and hold control and duplicate it, and we can put that that sphere closer to the to the elbow region. All right, um, let's go ahead and click and drag to delete the mask, and as you can see, I don't have the arm on the other side. This is basically because I don't I don't mind having this as this stage, or like I, I don't care about having the symmetry right now. And this is just because I can easily work on a side or one, one of the arms and then just mirror and weld it. So let's go ahead and go into solo mode. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to delete half of this. So, or at least, hang on, with the select rectangular tool and delete hidden, just the elbow on the other side, right? And we can go ahead and merge these two together. So I can just go to the merge sub palette, click on merge down, click OK. So now if I go into solo mode, I have the shoulder, the elbow and the two cylinders that I will use for the arm on one side. Um, you can potentially get rid of this one as well. Like I said, it doesn't doesn't really matter. Um, but this is basically the, the setup. <laughs> so this is probably the hardest part uh, to get right. And again, this doesn't look like much just yet but it's all about setting it up. So I'm gonna be moving a little bit faster now that I've shown you how to set it up. So I'm gonna show you the technique and then I'm gonna move on into some pre-made assets that I have uh, created with the, uh, with the different steps of the process. So the best thing right now is that if you enable polyframe, right, you'll see that all the pieces have different polygroups or different IDs. If I hold the Alt key and click on the different meshes, everything is you know, a separate mesh. So I use DynaMesh because it allows me to explore designs a lot easier, a lot better. So what I do is I'm going to select, let's say, the chest. I'm going to click on DynaMesh. And right now the DynaMesh, um, it's a little bit too dense. So um, those tools for you guys would be on the, the Geometry Palette uh, DynaMesh. So I can just take the resolution down a little bit, 48, and DynaMesh that. There we go. And the great thing about DynaMesh is that I can just pull, let's say, something like this, and you'll see all these stretched polygons um, that are happening here. If I want to, I just hold Control, click and drag, and Zeroes will basically retopologize this uh, to account for the new volumes, basically. So let's undo that. And let's do the same thing for everything else. So select the cylinder, hold the Alt key, cylinder, uh, sorry, let's just go back to 40. There we go. So I'm just going to repeat this process for all of them. I'm just doing it a little bit random in this in, in terms of the resolution that I'm using, but you can have a you know you can tweak this as much as you as you need to. All right, now I left these ones without dynamation because I want to show you something else. So if I go into solo mode, you'll see these ones have different polygroups. If you don't have different polygroups but you have multiple pieces in one subtool like I do have here, you can go to the polygroup palette and click on auto groups. And that way you have completely different polygroups um, on this mesh. And then what you can do is go to the Dynamesh palette. Hang on, have everything open. So Dynamesh palette, but click on the groups 
uh, switch. So if I click on groups and redynamesh this or dynamesh it, Seabridge is going to dynamesh everything, but at the same time keep the groups. So if I were to smooth this really, really strongly <laughs> like this, you see that everything is still separated, but it's the same mesh. So this is great because it allows me to, you know, do things like this, right? And if I want to redynamesh, Seabridge will take that into account, but keep everything separate so I can smooth things independently or hold control and shift and select something like that, invert the selection. You know, this is the, the type of workflow that I use. I just wanted to show you the tools before I, I go ahead and move a little bit faster. All right, so now that I have this ready, all I have to do is start tweaking the mesh so that it looks more like a, you know, like a human shape. So let's take the, the move brush with, uh, with symmetry and I'm gonna start pushing this. Uh, let's turn off local symmetry. And I'm going to start pushing this in a way that, um, you know, we can potentially see it happening as a, as a deltoid. All right, so at this point, I'm not even touching the sculpting brushes. This is just moving points, um, just pulling and pushing points, really. And this is a, a very repetitive process. So that's what I said that I'm going to show you like a pre-made version of this. But again, this is just to show you the entire process. And I'm keep, uh, just so you know, I keep holding the Alt key and clicking on different tools just to access them quickly. But you can also do that from the tool palette. Or if you press the letter N on your keyboard, you can also select them that way. All right, so let's go ahead and move the, the head forward a bit more and define the, the jaw. You can also hold the Shift key to access the smooth brushes and just start smoothing things out a little bit. And this is the, the part of the process, I, I suppose that, um, well, I, I enjoy this quite a bit, uh, but it's the part of the process where you can start to make design choices. So if you're not, uh, if you don't want to do a character, like a, like a humanoid character, and you want to focus more on, a, on an alien type of thing, you know, you can just select the head and just push it like that and continue working from there. But it's all about setting up the bases. Right, I'm going to select the, the back and then just exaggerate this trapecius area. Maybe not that much. And then try to set up the, the muscles here for the back. Uh, obviously, this is going to be a lot better, um, you know, a lot more defined once we move into, into the next step that I'm going to show you. But uh, for, as long as you can sort of define some of the areas or some of the, the meshes um, just with the move brush and with basic shapes, I think you are on, on the right track. So. That's what I'm trying to do. All right, so that's kind of like the, the process. You see, it just takes time um, to set up the, the bases with the different very, very simple geometric shapes. But once you have them all in place uh, with the move brush, it's, it's very easy to just go ahead and, and tweak it. Now, the final thing that I'm gonna show you before I jump into the next step is that, for instance, if I select the arm, because this is a single mesh, even though I have different polygroups, if I go ahead and I wanna try to, you know, integrate the deltoid area of the arm a little bit more with the move brush, it's very hard to do it, right? But if you select the brush palette, there's this one right here called the move topological, and it works in the same way. I have it here in my UI as well, and I can turn on the accu curve. So it's essentially the same thing as the move brush. The difference is that this move topological has an auto masking enable, uh, which means that I can click on, let's say on this point, um, let's turn on symmetry. I can click on this point and it's not gonna move everything. It's just gonna move anything that is related or um, it's gonna respect the continuity of the topology. So because the, the two volumes right now, they're not connected, I can just do this and it's automatically going to mask out the rest or at least not um, allowing me to to tweak it or, dis or distort it. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but um, yeah, that's basically what the move topological does. And so yeah, this is one, one tool that I can use to do this type of things. Let's push maybe here for the biceps, push that in, smooth that out a little bit, um, and there you go. So that's um, just another tool that I'm gonna use for the next step. So let me go ahead and bring in something else. So this is the blocking of the creature. I'm gonna load that up. Here we go. <laughs> so this is something that I did previously. Um, as you can see, it's the same idea, the same thing. So I have uh, some Dynamesh objects. Some, some of them have like polygroups. Um, 
but it's essentially the same thing right uh, the only thing that i didn't do in the previous one that i just showed you is that i added a I think I added a tube or, um, or a sphere for the nose and, and dynamic that. But as you can see, it's, it's pretty much the same. So the next step uh, in this process would be to merge everything together. So that can be done in, in different ways. The easiest thing at this point, because we have um, a set of tools or a set of meshes that are not that, that heavy in, in resolution, is to merge everything together. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Merge Visible. And here we go. So ZBrush will create a new tool. This one right here. So now we have a single mesh that has all the pieces together, right? At this point, if you want, let's go ahead and click on mirror and weld. And that way we mirror and weld the, the meshes. Um, but again, they're, they're still separate, so we can use the move topological. And just so that, you know, for the sake of demonstration, let me just go to the polygroup palette, like I showed you before, and auto group everything. So you can see every, everything or every single mesh has a different color, a different ID. And I'm going to mirror as, and mirror and weld again, just so that the left-hand side and the right-hand side is the same. Okay, so let's go back to the smart cap gray or the basic material. And this is where I'm going to start kind of like making sure certain areas of the mesh are more, um, you know, like certain features are, are more visible. <laughs> so I'm going to use something. Let's do it with the move brush. I'm just going to try to push the areas of the, of, the, of the eyes a bit more and start trying to, yeah, trying to define the, the facial features a little bit more. And at this point, I'm not entirely sure. Um, you know, if I were to just design this as I, as I talk, <laughs> it would be pretty hard. So I just have a, a rough idea of where I'm aiming or what I'm aiming for. Uh, plus, I have already prepared a, the, the steps but if I were just designing this from scratch this is a part of the process that I take very seriously and where I spend a lot of time before I go into details because this is the thing right in ZBrush um, adding details is really really easy <laughs> and I'll show you that in, in, in a second but I'm going to switch by the way to the move topological uh, so yeah what I was saying is it, it's very easy to add details in ZBrush what's hard is to make sure that whatever you do uh, can it kind of like reads well in terms of the volumes. So all of this process is just to say that uh, I spend a lot of time here making sure that different volumes and the different primary shapes are, are working fine. And to be honest, it's a very, it's a very easy process. You know, <laughs> um, all you have to do is just select a move brush and push and pull different parts of the mesh. All right, but to move faster, what I'll do is I'm gonna use a clay brush. And this brush allows me to establish you know, certain shapes a lot faster. So I'm going to start to add or start sculpting, really. So let's just go ahead and do the same thing here for the kind of like for the rib cage. And even though I'm still having different different meshes, when I use this tool, the clay brush, or you can also use the clay builder brush, uh, Zero starts to merge or not merge, but you know, pull the the surface together so that it looks like one. Uh, but if I turn this on, you'll see it's kind of like overlapping. Don't worry too much about this. We will tweak that later on. Uh, so I just can, you know, I can concentrate on volumes. And I constantly use this smooth brush as well. So we can do the, the muscles here for the, for the abdomen. That sort of thing. Um, maybe we can go ahead and merge this as well. Like I said, I'm, I'm not necessarily merging things. It just looks like it's merging them, but it's not. It's just kind of like pulling or pushing all the geometry together towards the same area so that it feels like it's more part of the same. But this is essentially the, the process or the step that I'm using. Just bit by bit, combining all of those super simple shapes into one. Sometimes I neglect the, the back because um, as, a, as a concept artist, you know, I, I work towards presenting an idea like, and it's, um, you know, it has to do with storytelling as well. It's, as long as I can, 
communicate something and com communicate a concept, an idea. Um, that's that's all I need. And sometimes I don't need to to present the character for every single angle unless it's uh, for production. All right. So this is you see it's pretty blobby at the moment, but this is essentially what it is. Um, this is the block out of the character. What I'll do now is I'm gonna move into the um, kind of like the primary shapes and show you how I can move from this to something that looks more like a, like the base mesh for the design that I'm gonna go for. So let me load up something else. So um, this is again a similar process. I think this is a, an older version, uh, but you can see it is, it is the same thing. Um, actually that's an old, older one. One second, here we go. So this is what I have for the for the character that I'm gonna be working on for the details. It is exactly the same thing. I just spend a lot more time um, tweaking these these pieces, tweaking the um, you know the transitions, making sure that the volumes feel feel right. Uh, so you can see this is something that potentially can be used for a human character. Same deal. Um, and at this point, if you want to make large proportion large proportional changes, sorry, it's uh, it's pretty easy. You can hold Control and Shift. And let's say if I want to make the arms a little bit long, longer, I can isolate all of these pieces, mask the rest, bring back everything, select the gizmo, and with the local symmetry, I can just go ahead and do this, right? So um, it allows me to play around with the design a lot more than um, if I go ahead and just merge everything together. So that's why I like to keep things <laughs> like this. But um, once I'm happy with this, what I can do is merge everything together into a dynamic. So I'm going to go ahead and load the next one up and this one has a lot more definition in terms of what the character looks like and now this is a single mesh right or a single um, object that is a dynamic so what I do to move from the previous point to this one is actually pretty simple let me go back so once I'm happy with this um, yeah with these settings I'm gonna go ahead and redynamesh everything but at this time I'm gonna turn off groups I wanna have everything as a single mesh and I'm gonna click on uh, sorry, hold control, click and drag to redynamesh. And you'll see now this is a single mesh. I'm also going to hold control and W to assign a single polygroup. And yeah, this is just a this is just a polygroup, right? <laughs> so uh, or a single polygroup. So now I can just go ahead and smooth this out with with the shift key. And now we don't have to worry about you know those intersecting pieces of geometry. There we go. Pretty easy. So that's exactly what I did to get to this point. And obviously, what you can see in this in this phase, that's me starting to to define the character. And this is still like a pretty low resolution. But if I go back one step, um, the the way that I approach that is with the you know it could be with the clay builder brush, um, just literally with a smaller brush size, trying to define let's say the cheekbones. The nose, maybe an area here for the eyes. But the the longer you stay within this low resolution, the easier that is going to be to manipulate uh, the the design changes that you want to make. Um, and I just want to emphasize that because you know if you if your plan is to design as you go, like when you're sculpting, you want to also have a bit of um a play with the, with the design itself. This is the key. To, to get something that works um, that works really well. So if you already have a concept, if you already have like, a, let's say a 2D sketch or uh, something like that, then this part can be automated a little bit more in, in the sense that you can use the reference that you have, the sketch that you have or the, the 2D concept and, and try to match the volumes a little bit faster. But if you're designing things, this is probably the best way to do it. So that's kind of like the best advice I can give you is uh, try to keep things as low resolution as possible before you commit uh, to add details. <laughs> so I'm just using the standard brush in, in this operation here just to add more volume. Um, and I can also use the damn standard brush to kind of like cut through the model. That's kind of like my water knife tool. Um, so yeah, that's what I, what I use to generate those more pronounced shapes as you can see it's, it's pretty pretty straightforward but um you know if you look at it from from the distance you kind of you can see that it's a head or a, like a face but you get closer and the resolution is not great so that's currently what i have in here just 
with a slightly more resolution. And I'm starting to define some features that are not as human. So like the, the wider nose that's a little bit flatter here and a little bit, you know, higher. Um, yeah, it's, it's all about proportions when you're dealing with a creature design and that sort of thing. All right. So remember what I said at the beginning that it's a very organic process in the sense that, you know, now that I have a single mesh, what what do I do now? What's the next step to, to define the character? Um, this doesn't mean that once I have this single mesh or everything is part of the single mesh, it doesn't mean that that's the end of that process or that step. I can just easily go back and cut things up and work in different ways. So that's what I'm going to show you. So let's go ahead and load the next step. Here we go. So you'll see it's exactly the same thing, but the head is a lot more defined than before. So the reason for that is pay attention to these active points. Uh, the active points is essentially how many points are in the mesh, in the Dyna mesh for each subtool. The total points is, is kind of like the summary of all the tools. So if I select the head, I have 300,000 points. If I select the body, I have one, well, 200,000 points. So that's, um, that's what I was kind of like referring to. If I select the previous one, if I go ahead and try to increase my Dynamesh resolution a little bit, let's say to uh, 464 and redynamesh, right? I'm going to have a lot of resolution to play around with, but it is exactly the same thing. Like the amount of resolution that I have is exactly the same thing for the face than for the body. And in most cases, the head, uh, at least for a character like this or a creature, the head is what needs more details or at least more uh, kind of like finer details, right? So what I did was uh, very simple. I just went ahead and duplicated this mesh, right? So you have two exact, you know, meshes living in the same space. And I'm going to go into solo mode just to show you. Actually, let's go ahead. I'm, I'm going to paint it with green and the previous one, I'm going to paint it with red just so that you know exactly what I'm doing. Um, and I'm going to take the, the red one and I'm going to use the knife lasso to just go ahead and delete the face or the head. So now I have the head as a single mesh. Maybe let's do it again so that I can take into account a bit more of the, the neck. Right. And I'm just going to mirror and weld that. Oops. Without local symmetry. There we go. And for the body, I'm doing the same thing, but this time I'm just going to delete everything but the face. So. Don't worry, I'll repeat this, this step again. So I'm going to hold the Alt key and delete that. All right. So if I go into solo mode, what I have is the body and in one tool and the head in another tool. Or, sorry, a different subtool, <laughs> uh, but they're within the same tool. So essentially what I do with the knife brush is holding the Control and Shift key to do this, and that will delete an area. But if I do the same thing, and before I let go of the key uh, or the click, I hold the Alt key, I'm just going to invert that idea of that selection that I'm cutting. And that's essentially what I did for the body. Uh, all right. So now I can go ahead and because I have two different meshes, I can work. Let's turn off this now. Uh, I can work with different resolutions. So the, the head has 80,000. So I can just go ahead and say, you know what? For the head, I need more resolution. Let's go for this much. Redynamesh. And now I have, uh, well, that's not what I wanted. It's, um, hang on. Let's move that out. There we go. So now the head has 280,000 points and the body, I can just keep it at, at 400. So let's redynamish that, right? So that's the idea of splitting things up. So that's what I said as well at the beginning. Don't worry too much about, you know, if you already have a, a single mesh or not. It's, it's very organic in that sense. So um, at this point, what I'll do is I'm going to define maybe the body a little bit more uh, just with a damp standard brush again large brushes and a lot of smoothing. That's the best way to kind of like define anatomy, uh, or at least that's what helps me define the anatomy um, when I'm working on like a humanoid character. So I'm just pressing uh, softly. Uh, by the way, I'm using a, a Cintiq, a Wacom Cintiq. So it's, um, it's a lot easier for me to, to do what I'm doing, just pressing softly or harder. Um, but yeah, that's how I can define the anatomy. Just pressing softly and then using the smooth brush constantly to, to smooth out the area. So for the head, what I did was the same. I just smoothed the whole thing. And with the damp, damp standard brush, I defined pieces of the, of the face a little bit more. So something like this for the, for the lips. Um, we can hold the Alt key and invert that effect of the damp standard brush just to 
again define that a bit more and then always use the the smooth brush so i constantly use the smooth brush and let's do the nostrils a little bit as well here just to, to get it closer to what i showed you in the in the previous one or in the next step really all right so let me show you how um i went from this to this one in terms of adding the the eyes um, and this is something that i like to do very early in the in the process just to to show the eyes um just because that gives me like an anchor point like a visual anchor point of what to to do or, or how to work around it so um in zeros there is this really cool tool or macro call um, you can ignore my macros so this is something that you will see in your version of zeros if you have the latest version if you go to append eyes zeros is basically going to append a couple of spheres give them a black material a black color with a toy plastic material i can use the gizmo 3d and again just place those in there so this is just a very quick way to generate some eyes in your mesh so i'm just going to position those where i think they should be in relation to the to the head and then go back to the head and use you know the move brush to adjust that right um again it's all about proportions at this stage and figuring out what um you know the, the transition between one volume and the next um and just to show you again the how i achieve this this effect this is just poly paint uh, i'm gonna go ahead and use this standard brush and actually yeah let's use the standard brush um yep the standard brush and i'm gonna go ahead and choose a reddish color like so and for the eyes i'm gonna fill object so all of these tools are under the tool sorry the color palette so you can just select your color and click on fill object and that will fill the the eyes with a specific color and then with the standard brush selected i'm going to go ahead and turn off lazy mouse z add and rgb yeah so <laughs> basically those tools uh if you have the standard ui there should be at the top uh, but if not you can go to the transform sorry to the draw palette and this is what i change so i enable rgb and disable z add so now my brush my standard brush is not going to affect the volumes but it's going to affect the color just by doing this and the other one the lazy mouse is just so that you know it works a little bit faster and that is on the stroke palette uh lazy mouse that one right there uh so i'm gonna select a lighter color get a little bit closer here and then just paint like that and then probably something a bit lighter even uh, you can also subdivide this by the way if you want to have more resolution and that's it let's go ahead and reset the brush you can i have it here in my ui but you can reset your brush from the brush palette you can go all the way to the bottom click on all brushes or the current brush all right so that's basically what we have at this point again this one is a slightly more defined but just because i spend more time tweaking the volumes uh, but we're getting closer to you know define this as a as a creature rather than a character so the next step is blocking the secondary shapes i would call these uh, primary shapes so uh let me just explain that really quickly so this is what i call primary or primary shapes right uh because you can they affect the the overall uh silhouette of the character right so that that's primary um the secondary forms it's the the areas within the volumes that you can identify uh, very very easily so um for the for the purpose of this kind of like walkthrough uh, i'm just going to create kind of like a like a reptile like a snake man so there's going to be a lot of um textures or a pattern like this and that's what i would call uh, secondary shapes so at this point i'm not even thinking about the tertiary shapes which would be well tertiary tertiary shapes um that would be kind of like the little bumps that you can see in between pieces like wrinkles that sort of thing right but at the moment what i want to do is just focus on the secondary shapes because the primary shapes are are done like you can you kind of like at this stage you can kind of like tell that this is a human creature right and that's what the primary uh 
forms should do. And if you want to, you know, do something completely different, um, that's when you have to, you know, tweak your, your primary shapes. Uh, one little trick to, to check the silhouette is to turn the preview to flat and go into one of these colors, like either white or black, uh, depending on your background, and be able to judge the primaries. So uh, the way that you achieve that, or the way that you access those, is here from the render palette. You can go to render properties. Uh, hang on, render passes. Where is it? Oh, here. <laughs> Sorry. The um, the different switches. So you have the preview, and you have the best and fast and flat. So these are the two switches that I have in my UI. If I play, press flat, that's what it shows me, like a shadeless version of the mesh. Or preview is what um, you should see by default. Anyway, so that's what I have in here, just to check silhouettes. Uh, another thing, just uh, an, as an extra tip, uh, you can enable thumbnail which is what I have in here. And again, that's under the preference thumbnail, this one right here. So you can turn it on and off. That's the switch that I have in my UI. Uh, and you can click the background. You can click on the background and select a black color and zero will automatically interpret that black color as transparent. So you can click and drag to rescale it. And as you rotate the character, you can see um, you kind of like a thumbnail version of that character in real time which is super handy. So that's why I have it in here. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and move uh, forward a little bit. We're getting closer to the detailing stage. So I'm going to load the next stage, uh, which is this one. <laughs> so quite a bit of a, of a change there, but let me just show you uh, what I did in order to achieve this. So um, if you think about it, it is exactly the same thing in... Uh, hang on. There we go. It's exactly the same thing in, in terms of what I've done. Um, so we have the mesh for the for the body i just added a bit of the the head there uh, but we have the body and we have a version of the head right that it's kind of like extruded here to to account for i don't know i think this is this is kind of like a cobra type of character like a snake man <laughs> let's just call it the snake man and then, yeah this is basically what i did so i just took the the face uh, or the head and extruded a little bit or, or moved it um and then i'll show you how i created this pattern for uh, for the secondary forms of the mesh. So let's go back to what I had. So what I did, because you see part of the of the face is, is kind of like embedded in the body. I don't know if that makes sense. So from the jaw, yeah, from the jaw downwards, that's what I have as part of the mesh, uh, as part of the body. And this is kind of like a mask on top. So what I did was um, I duplicated the head, right? And I went ahead and merged down the body with one of the first heads. So took the, the mesh for the body, merged that down, right? So this is now a single mesh. Let's go into solo mode and let's smooth everything out. Let's go ahead and redyne a mesh. Maybe let's keep the same resolution. Um, what I just did there, sorry, um, with the control double, you can assign a single polygroup. Uh, but yeah, this is basically a single mesh now. But I'm not interested in anything, you know, above the, the jaw. So what I can do is with the, with the masking brushes, I'm going to use the mask lasso. You can access the masking brushes by holding control and click on the brush palette. I'm going to go ahead and hold control and mask everything that I want to keep. Like that. Right. And then the rest, I'm just going to use the smooth brush. You can also uh, use the smooth strong if you want. That's a brush that comes with ZBrush. But it's not in, uh, it's probably, I don't think it's in the default settings. Um, I have it here in my UI. This one, Smooth Stronger. That, that allows you to smooth things a lot faster. But if you don't see it in your UI, you can access it by going to the light box, going to brushes, and search for Smooth. And it would be here, Smooth Brush, uh, Smooth Stronger. So you can just double click on that and it will load that Smooth Brush. Uh, just to smooth all this out. Cool, so that's it. And then with the move brush, I just push things that I don't want to see inwards a little bit. There we go. And clear the mask. And now I also have the other head, right? That is, you know, it's like a duplicate of the, of the previous one. And this is the opposite, right? I want to do the same thing, hold control. And with the lasso, and let's, um, let's keep all of this, right? So that's, oh, sorry. Invert the mask, control click and, and 
click once in the canvas to invert the mask. So this is what I want to keep, the mask areas, but the rest, I can just go ahead and smooth that out and maybe use the move brush to push that in. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and invert the mask again. Hold Control, click, and invert. And now I can just start pulling and pushing. And remember, this is just a DynaMesh object, so it's pretty easy to just pull things like this, distort the mesh, and then just re-DynaMesh things together once, um, once you finish with the primary shapes. That's why it's, it's very important to get the, the primary shapes um, working. So I think I also pulled kind of like the sigmatic arc, this uh, cheekbone area. I pulled that as well, just to to account for the for the extra meshes or the extra um, volume. Sorry. So yeah, pretty much that, and then redynamize the whole thing, smooth that out. And if you want to add a little bit of thickness here, you can use the inflate brush, like so, redynamize, so on and so forth. Um, so I'm going to select the body. Again, use the move brush and kind of like pull this closer. But hopefully you get the idea, right? So that's, that's kind of like the setup of what I have in here. <laughs> A little bit better, uh, better defined. Uh, but let, let's say things like these areas of the cranium, um, you can use the damn standard brush or the standard brush and yeah, just do this. And that helps you define those areas a little bit more. So that's what I did there. Uh, but anyway, just going back to the secondary forms, right? All of these cuts that I have in here, that's me kind of like defining the pattern that I want to follow, uh, kind of like a flow of details. And that's very easily done with Dam Standard Brush. You'll see even these scales, um, the resolution is still pretty low and they're just like cuts through the model. So if I go back, select the body, and I'm going to use the Dam Standard Brush. I can just go ahead and start doing those cuts like that, right? So I'm just gonna try to keep it close to what I did with the with the other file that I just showed you. But in a nutshell, this is this is what it is. It's just using the a single brush like the dam standard brush to cut through the model and yeah, and basically define the pattern a little bit more. So here I'm gonna take the neck muscles. And I'm going to accentuate those a bit more. And with the smooth brush, just get rid of that extreme cut. And then I also have this, this pattern here under the, the chin and the neck, right? And I'm going to duplicate, not duplicate, but <laughs> replicate the pattern here on, around the biceps. And I'm going to ignore the back just for now so that we can move a little bit faster here because we're getting closer anyway. Um, and for the, some of these kind of like, you know, cuts in here, uh, the idea is that I want to create some some transition between these smaller pieces that are more like a, like a tough skin armor uh, towards this scale base armor of the, kind of like a crocodile type of thing or a, I don't know, <laughs> like um, like a lizard or something. So I'm just gonna do something like that to show you what what I mean. But you'll see, they're just they're just cuts. <laughs> they're not um, they're not sculpted or anything. This is purely to to define. Uh, these lines are not details. They're just a, a way to define the you know the secondary shapes that we're talking about. All right, so um, let's say that you're happy with this. Obviously, this requires a, a bit more time to to get him get him right. Um, this is the, the next process or the next step. It's a uh, it's a bit more you know repetitive. So I'm not going to spend too much time in there. Uh, but the idea is to take something like this standard brush or the clay brush, right, and then just go bit by bit and then try to add some volume, right. So that is not just the cuts that they actually have some mass. So the same thing around here, around the neck. And obviously with the smooth brush, I still have the smooth strong, so I'm going to switch to the smooth. Um, in fact, let me just show you another trick. So I have the smooth picks here, which you can find under the smooth brushes, so smooth uh, picks. And this one respects, if you hold shift, it's already there, uh, it respects those cuts. So if I go ahead and play around with these volumes a bit more, and then press the shift key to smooth, and go over the the cuts, you'll see they're not 
being affected as much. So that's what I use to kind of like add volume to these details or these markings, but at the same time keep everything very, very smooth. Um, you know, avoid the, the bumpy surfaces. But yeah, that's you know that's that's it. <laughs> that's um, that's all there is to it in terms of um, this part of the or this step of the process. It's really simple. Uh, let me just use this standard brush just to accentuate these neck muscles a little bit more. Maybe this this connection in here. Uh, but yeah, bit by bit, this is what I got in here. You'll see it's exactly the same thing. Uh, it's obviously a little bit better defined because uh, I didn't do it in a rush, but it's um, that's that's it, right? Now, the next step is to add a little bit more volume to these details, and I'm going to show you a really cool technique to achieve the same kind of like patterns, but in a, in a more controlled way for the head. And um, I think this is probably the most exciting trick <laughs> that I'm going to show you today. So um, let's go ahead and, and do that. So I'm going to open up um, the next step. And this is all you have to do. So before I get to that, before I get to that pattern, uh, let me show you what I've done uh, for the body. Because you see now there is a, a bit more, you know, variation here in the silhouette, in the edges. Uh, those those scales are kind of like breaking away uh, and breaking that that clean silhouette that we had before, right? And it is actually pretty easy. All I did was with the the masking brush, I have a custom sharp mask uh, that you can also get, uh, you can download it for free from um, the um, uh, 3D Concept Artist website. So let me show you what that is, just in case you want to do that. Um, if you go to resources in the 3D Concept Artist website, you can go and try to find um, at the very bottom, this one, this the UCG starter kit from Zbrush uh, for beginners. So if you get get the starter kit, a new tab will open up. And this is basically a free combo that I put together for anyone new to ZBrush um, that allows you to get started with ZBrush. So it comes with a custom UI that I've prepared, uh, similar to what I've been showing you today. Some materials, like a quick um, reference guide of like where the shortcuts are, some brushes, um, you know, custom matcaps, etc. And yeah, so these brushes, within these brushes, you have this one, the one with the M. That's exactly what I'm going to be showing you. It's just a sharper version of the uh, of the masking brush. So these ones are super, super simple, but I think they're like a great starting point for anyone that is new um, to ZBrush. And the character you see here, by the way, and the ZBrush Ultimate Guide, that's part of the um, the more in-depth course. But this part, or like this, this is starter kit is free, so you can just go ahead and download it now. Uh, anyway, so that's the brush that I have here. And what it does is holding control, it allows you to define a very, very sharp mask. I'm not pressing any harder or anything like that. This is literally what this brush does. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and invert that mask. And then I can just use either the move brush or like let's use the standard brush first just to define this area a bit more. And then the smooth brush. And then I'm going to take the move brush and kind of like pull this out like so right and then I can clear the mask and you know you can smooth things if you wanted to uh, but let's repeat the same process just so that you can see that once you get the hang of it like the the steps at least it is pretty straightforward so just mask in an area that you want invert it maybe use the move brush and just overlap it a bit right so that's that's basically Rinse and repeat. That's what I did for those um, kind of like scales that you see on the next on the next step, right? And by the way, this is still a dynamesh, so at any point you can just click and drag to redynamesh. You can increase the resolution, and if you want to preserve some of those details or these carvings that you've done, um, you know, a little bit more, one thing you can do is in the dynamesh palette, uh, you can click on project, and this will take a little bit longer. To produce the dynamesh, but Zbrush is going to project the details back into the into the object, so you can um, you can keep those you know very sharp lines a little bit more. Anyway, that's that's essentially all there is to it. That's what I did for this mesh uh, for the next step, right? And one more thing that I did that you can probably tell around this area of the pictorials. Um, if I go back, is that they're not as blobby, and that is just so that I you know it gives the illusion that it's more of a a reptilian skin <laughs> rather than uh, you know 
I don't know, this could be like an elephant or rhino rhinoceros skin. So what I did was with the clay brush, I hold the Alt key and then just push things manually like this, just to flatten them a bit. Uh, but you can also use the Trim Dynamic. It's a pretty good brush for that sort of thing. Uh, but again, it's, it's more of the same, right? It's just, this is the tool, and now you can apply it to the rest. All right, so for the next step, which is pretty cool, actually, it's the, I'm going to select the head, go into solo mode, and if I enable poly paint, you see that I went through the process of painting just the pattern that I want to achieve in, um, in the next step, right? Or like, the, this is the different scales that I want to generate. So this is pretty simple. I just use a standard brush. Right, and let me just show you. Um, let's go back to the previous one, right? And I'm gonna show you here how it's done. So again, I'm just gonna turn the the, the um, standard brush into a painting brush, and just enable RGB, fill that with a white color, and then select black, and then I can just paint. Right? If you wanna, if you don't wanna have this kind of um, like very smooth way of painting. You can tweak this brush or you can do the same thing with any other brush, really. So let me actually, yeah, let me just go ahead and show you how you can tweak, you know, this smooth version of the of the painting very quickly. Uh, if you go to the brush palette, right? So this is the brush palette. If you go to the brush palette, go to the tablet pressure. And in the tablet pressure, you can expand the RGB intensity. So you see this is very um, smooth curve, you can go ahead and click on this point and push it all the way up, right? And if you do that, when I paint, it's going to be 100% um, RGB or 100% of the <laughs> of the color that I choose. So let's go ahead and start by defining the main kind of like flow. So just going to paint these lines, right? And I think I did something like, like that. So I like to define the it's, it's kind of like the same thing as what I've been doing in terms of defining the primary shapes. So I'm defining kind of like the large, um, the large cuts that I want to keep. And then I'm going to concentrate on the secondary forms, which are the, you know, <laughs> the rest. <laughs> so this is going to be my primary shapes. Um, then for the second ones, I'm going to start doing this type of thing. Right, so... I'm going to try to create some kind of interesting pattern here. Not going to be the same, but just to give you an idea. And I'm doing this very, very quickly because I know it's boring to kind of like watch, um, watch me doing this, but <laughs> um, this is basically what I did, right? And I, I like to variate the size to, to add contrast to the pattern and add a little bit of hierarchy. So, for example, around the eyebrows, I just add a tiny bit. Well, I mean, I make the scales as, as smaller. <laughs> that's what I mean. Um, but yeah, that's that's the process. Pretty straightforward. So I ended up with this, just doing that. Um, but that's not the cool part of the trick. The cool part of the trick is that I can use a tool in ZBrush called the Polygroup it to to basically assign a polygroup to all of these pieces individually. So uh, if I enable Polygroup right now, let's actually hold Control and W. So this is a single polygroup. I just change the material so you can see a little bit better. Um, what I can do is go to the C plugin palette. And this is a plugin that, you know, it, it ships with ZBrush as well. So you should have it. Um, and find something called the polygroup it, right? So if you hover over this and press the control key, actually anywhere in ZBrush, any button that you, that you want, you can hold the control key and it tells you what it does. So you just hover over and it tells you what it does. So one of these um, the difference between these two, the polygroup it from paint and the border, is that one is going to try to create a polygroup base on that border, and the polygroup it from paint is just going to create a polygroup base on, you know, on the difference. So, in other words, uh, let me just explain that really quickly. Um, if you have, if you ha hang on, <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't work. Let's um, let's clear that one up. All right, let me move that out of the way. That was probably too big. So if you have something like this, I don't know, this is just another pattern, right? This is what we are defining with simple color in ZBrush. If we use that polygroup it, what ZBrush is going to do is look at the medium point, basically, or like the, the average 
center line between you know the thickness of this right so this is the, the thickness um, and Siri is going to look at the middle point here right and it's going to do that for all the different um, lines or the entire line that we created right and based on that it's going to say okay these these lines are meeting in all these points so this is going to be polygroup one two three four five five and etc so that's the the idea the theory behind it so we click on polygroup it um from paint that's the one that i want to use we'll just give it a second and there we go so now each one of these pieces is a different polygroup that we can use the select uh, rectangular piece and isolate right individually which is pretty awesome and all we have to do now i'm going to turn off the poly paint we don't need that anymore or in fact you can just fill it with full white because now we have what we need um what i need to do now is clean this uh, a little bit so there's a couple of ways of doing it the easiest one for me and the automated version would be to go to the uh the formation palette and there is this polish by groups which basically is going to polish everything but is going to take the groups that's why it's called polish by groups and it's going to smooth that out so let me get closer and i click polish by groups and there we go so we can do that or run this a few times just until we start to to get some nice crisp edges uh, you can also use polish by feature and if you turn this um, little dot on and off that's just gonna go for a more like a stronger version of the algorithm so if i enable this or toggle this on and off uh, if i do polish by groups it's gonna be pretty pretty strong right so you see we get some nice looking pattern uh, and that's just a, a couple of buttons right like from painting so now that we have this we can go ahead and take it a step further in terms of the, the design and, and details so let me get out of solo and i'm gonna go ahead and, and i'm just gonna load the next one so you can see the the result of what i'm gonna do so here's the result right so pretty nice set of details right and that is again very very easy based on what we already have so this version that i have here um i just did it to show you the result but let me show you how that is done so in solo mode what i'll do is i'm going to go to the geometry palette and i'm going to expand the edge loop palette i'm going to also turn this on and switch to a skin shade so that you can see what's going on so there is a tool in zbrush called the panel loops right and the panel loops is going to look at the basically the different polygroups in zbrush and it's going to create panels out of the the poly loops around it so just without changing anything this is uh, should be the default settings if i click on panel loops look what's going to happen zbrush automatically is going to assign that nice bevel edge around all of those pieces and if i go ahead and smooth holding control uh, holding shift sorry um you see that all of these pieces are actually separated right so that's what i want let me, let me do it without color so that you can see better right so we're nearly there right i'm gonna smooth this and you see this is what i get so this is a fantastic tool that allows you to uh, produce these type of patterns really really quickly now before i do that and this is something that i should have mentioned um before i created this panel and actually smooth this out i actually duplicated the face or the or the head right just because you know if i if i do this if i run this um and the, the poly group it sorry the, the panel loop is if i run the panel loop in this that's it right i don't have any other other head so before i do that make sure that or if you're following along make sure that you duplicate the original face that you have with the details and then do this process in a separate um or a duplicate uh, but yeah that's basically it. like if you want to do um a bit of tweaking you can change the polish and this polish is something that is applied at the time of the panel looping so zbrush automatically polishes the surface if i increase this a lot and go to panel loops you'll see that's uh, kind of like hard to see but it is applying a lot more polishing uh, you can also change the thickness of the of the beveling and you can also change the bevel type so this curve here um let's go ahead and do it just to show you what it does and i'm gonna isolate this piece Just give me one second uh, uh, i don't think i isolated everything but all 
All right, I think this one, it will, this one should show it a little bit. So you'll see the profile of um, every piece that was created with the panel loops. It follows that shape that you have here in the profile. So you can do any weird shape that you want, and then all the pieces are going to have that um, that profile. You can also, uh, like I said, use the thickness, and that basically how thick this panel is going to be. Cre um, you know, when you when you play the panel loop process, um, how thick these panels are going to be. And that's pretty much it. So let's undo that or go back to what I had. So I just un undo all that. Um, I'm going to reset this. So now I have a flat line and I can click in the center to add a point. And now I have this very, very smooth um, surface. Let's go ahead and click panel loops. Uh, whoops. Let me undo that once again. Let's do it again. There we go. I'm going to polish it a little bit more. All right. So I can just smooth all of that. Uh, but again, you can do it um, a bit more automated. So I'm going to go to Polish, Polish by Groups. Or sorry, not Polish by Group, Polish by Features. And probably Polish is going to be a little bit faster. <laughs> there we go. So with Polish, it's a little bit faster. And we get that nice kind of like smooth, but at the same time, um, inflated surface which is working really nice uh, one thing that i like to do because again this creates polygroups everywhere is to go back to the polygroup palette again and click auto group and there we go so now we have a different polygroup for all these pieces so what's um what's left in terms of you know tweaking this part of the process is deleting whatever you whatever you don't need really so for instance this this part, uh, this polygroup is useless. So I'm going to hold Control and Shift to isolate it, invert the selection, and do the same thing for the eyes, um, the nostrils area. Um, I think that's about it. The rest is pretty useful. And then go to uh, Modify Topology. Again, that's under the Geometry palette. Let me just collapse everything because I have so many of them already open. All right, so in the Tool palette, go to Geometry. I'm going to collapse this as well and expand modify topology delete hidden right so these are the ones that i've have hidden i uh, had delete hidden so now they're not there anymore um if you want you can just go ahead and mirror and well i'm missing a few of those here but probably don't need them anyway delete hidden and that's about it like we now have this piece that we can go ahead and continue you know polishing we can Go for a bit more polish just to split them or separate them a little bit more um, and then you can use something like the standard brush i'm going to reset that brush uh, holding the alt key just to push things in or vice versa if you want to accentuate this this line you can use the normal effect of the brush over all of these meshes uh, which is pretty awesome so yeah that's that's a really fun uh, really fun trick that i use to produce um, where am, where am I <laughs> to produce this guy? Here we go. <laughs> so um, oh, one more thing that I did as well is I duplicated the face or the head and I merged it back into, into the body. So now I have the actual, you know, this is a single mesh, as you can see. And it's just having those kind of like scales on top as a, as a kind of like as a mask, right? Um, but yeah, once I have this, we can go ahead and move on to the next uh, step. And we're getting closer to finalizing this. It's just loading up. Um, there we go. All right, so the next step is adding details. And I just have a bunch of them. Here we go. So right now, there's a lot more detail. I'm going to switch to a different material so that you can see this kind of like a nice uh, set of high frequency details, like skin details all around. Hang on, sorry. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, a nice set of details like scales all over. Uh, but in order to do that, what I like to, to do at this stage is essentially convert this mesh into something that has quads or that is quad base. Uh, so because with Dynamesh, if I go into solo mode, what we have, even though we have plenty of resolution, I'm going to get really close here. You'll see there are lots of triangles because ZBrush needs to create those triangles in order to um, 
to produce the geometry and, and every time that we dynamesh uh, that geometry is going to be there so what i like to do at this stage is essentially uh, let me go back press f to frame model is to convert this into a usable mesh so that's what i've done in here um and i have multiple subdivision levels right so i have level one two three four and five and obviously this is the the highest of division level with more um with more resolution i have three million polygons in this mesh and that's where i gonna you know where i'm gonna apply the details and the same thing goes for this other mesh right so i have multiple subdivision levels right i have a, a nice set of you know a, a relatively clean set of um pieces in here and then i just subdivide them to add to add those details so the way that that works or this process works is again very simple with zbrush is really automated so um i took this mesh the dynamesh so i'm just gonna give it i'm gonna give it a red color so you know exactly what i'm talking about and the new ones i'm gonna give them a green color so red or orange means dynamesh and the green ones means they're ready to go So this is the final version. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off and enable the Dynamesh one, right? So um, what I'll do is duplicate this mesh. So I'm gonna duplicate that. That's what I did for this. And to this one, I'm just gonna give it a blue color just <laughs> so that you know what I'm doing. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the Dynamesh head. Duplicate and give it a full um, blue color. So now I'm gonna concentrate. I'm gonna turn everything off and I'm gonna concentrate on only one and then um yeah that kind of explains the process for the rest so i'm going to use the the body because that's probably the more complex one um so this is a dynamesh and i'm just going to use symmetry and go to the geometry palette go to zero measure and i'm going to click on adapt or i'm going to leave adapt on it should be on by default and i'm going to click on either half to you know achieve half of the points or i can set a um, a polygon count like a target polygon count so for instance you know i can just set it to oh, let's just leave it at half it's just probably easier so yeah um yeah within <laughs> within the zero measure half and adapt i'm going to click on zero measure and i also have um the activate symmetry enabled so what this process does again it's pretty automated um, is generate a quad base topology that is gonna um, is gonna analyze the volume. So it's just taking a look at the entire volume and is going to create a new set of uh, yeah a new topology, a new base mesh, and that's what I want. And and the reason I prefer or that I need quads instead of triangles is because I'm gonna go for the the subdivision approach, and subdividing a triangle can cause like artifacts, and it's not it's not ideal. All right, let me turn this on. As you can see, there's plenty of resolution, but at least now everything is kind of like quad base. So what I want to do now, just in case there are some like weird areas like this, you can manually smooth them out like so. Uh, but just in case, I just want to run a polish. So deformation, just quick polish for everything, just to smooth things out and run the same thing again. So I'm going to uh, remesh or Z remesh everything again. And because I have the half switch enable as well as the adapt, is basically reducing the amount. So right now I have 120,000 roughly uh, points available. I'm gonna do it one more time. Um, I wanna reduce it quite a bit, just to show you that this process is you know very simple and doesn't require too much uh, too much effort. So now I have 54,000. One more time, just in case, and we have 25,000. So that's plenty, and we keep. We, we kind of like kept the, the silhouette and that's what we want. Obviously, to, doing, um, to do that, or as you do this process, you realize that we lost a lot of the details, right? And we don't have subdivision levels or anything like that. So that's the next step, um, which consists on subdividing the model. So I'm going to subdivide it a few times. So I have 1 million. Let's go for, well, that's too much, but 1.6 million points for the body. Uh, so it's really smooth, right? But... This is when I'm gonna uh, when I'm gonna go ahead and turn on just the the body that I created or this remesh body and the one that I have with the dynamesh. So again, the orange one is with the one with all the details and the dynamesh. The uh, the white one right now or the blue one, sorry, is the one that is with the nice topology. So just to 
Double check. This is the blue one. Right? This is the blue one with a nice topology. This is the orange with the details, but it's a dynamic. So let's go ahead and select the, the new one, the blue one, and make sure that only those two are enabled or visible. And I'm going to click on Project All, which for you would be under the Project Palette. I'm going to click on Project All. Um, no, I don't want to project any poly paint. Go into solo mode. Uh, whoops, let's go into <laughs> to the highest uh, subdivision level and project all again. So what Zebrish is doing right now is looking at that dynamic sketch that we had with all the details, and it's looking at the topology or the new base mesh that we created using zero measure and essentially projecting all those details. And that's it. It's pretty cool, right? So. Now we have all those nice details from the sketch, but in a, in a piece of geometry that is a lot more uh, useful. Uh, by the way, at this point, you might realize that <laughs> I haven't bothered with the hands or the, or the lower part of the torso, uh, just because I know the, the final concept or the final image that I'm going to go ahead and do with this character is, um, you know, it, it's, it's from, the, from the West app and the arms are going to be down so um, yeah I'm not going to worry about that but again the process is exactly the same so now I have subdivision levels and I can go back to the lowest subdivision level where I have you know control over um, you know large proportional changes if I want to do them or to the highest subdivision where I have the details so that's pretty much what I have in here right so the way that I achieve those details all of these ones uh, let me let me actually do it on the Dynamesh version and the previous one just so that you know what I have. Um, yeah, I'm going to do it on this one. So again, with, with brushes in ZBrush or with details in ZBrush, it's really easy. You can just use the standard brush. And, you know, this takes time. So you can just go ahead and do this type of things just to generate. I don't know if you can see that, but just to generate a pattern, I'm just pressing and creating this kind of like noodly effect. Um, and then you can use something like the smooth peaks to smooth that out. And that it starts to create that nice um, noise surface and, and details, right? You can also um, use alphas. So for instance, uh, let's go ahead and change this. So I'm going to go to the stroke palette, click on drag rect and go to the alpha palette and select the alpha 08, right? I can just click and drag and then start building a lot of the details like that, right? You can press Alt to push things in and then go back with the smooth brush, uh, with the smooth peaks brush, and that generates that very nice set of details. So it's pretty easy. <laughs> so that's, um, that's the point that I wanna make, that it's really easy to do details. So don't rush into making those details. Um, focus on the primary and secondary shapes. That's kind of like the key. Um, but in order to do those details, have a, a set of custom brushes just to speed up the workflow a little bit. So um, I'm going to go to my brushes. I'm going to go to creature skin. Um, yeah, let's go to creature skin. So I'm going to use something like this pattern. And I'm going to show you what this one does here at the back. So this brush, what it does is it creates these bumps and then you can go over the areas. Um, and it also follows kind of like the flow of your brush stroke. So I can do this type of thing and it kind of like has um, this flow. So I like to use this in certain areas to produce these bumpy surfaces um, and it's quite automated. And you can also use the, um, the alternative version. So you can hold the Alt key and then generate these uh, very thick pores, for instance, right? And that's just one single brush. And that's from a from a pack of brushes, um, the creature pack bro back pack of brushes. Um, I will I will show you later on um, where you can get them if you're interested. But it's just a, a a way to speed things up. I mean, you know, having those brushes not necessarily going to save you um, the the manual work that you have to do, but it, it definitely can speed up the the workflow as you can see. So it's just adding some some more intricate details for a concept. But you can totally do this manually. This is my point. Like you don't have to uh, resource to these brushes to achieve the same result. It's just a uh, at the end of the day, it's just a tool. So it, it it's um it's about speeding up workflows. And for me, this detailing process is really um, where these brushes shine. 
Um, but yeah, that's how I add those details. Just to show you a couple more, um, let's go for let's go for this one. This is the the one that I use for the for the back for most of the back, and it it just has a pattern that you can build um, with scales. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the, as you can see, this is you know if you have the um, the secondary forms ready, the primary shapes working, this is very easy. You can just follow those um, those secondary forms that you have, and uh, it becomes a really really simple process. And uh, one more, just to give you a an idea. So this is from a creature pack, uh, but I do have another one for skin. So this is specifically for skin. Uh, I'm gonna use this one, which is for the lips, actually. So that's how I created the the details for the lips. Right? Uh, and I'm doing this very, very quickly, but you get the idea. But I can use this brush not just for the for the lips, but I can add some kind of like wrinkly areas here to the to the biceps. And the way that this brush works is it has a tileable texture. Or alpha that allows you to sort of like follow the path as well. Um, so yeah, this is something I use to add, you know, kind of like wrinkles and additional folds on top of the um, the shapes that I have already established. Um, but yeah, that's that's essentially it, <laughs> really. And add a few more here just for the fun of it. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and load the the next step, which is almost the final one. Now it's loading up, and this is the the final one actually, the the final sketch. So that's um, let me just bring in the color one. So let's use this one as a reference anyway. So at this point, um, I have everything that I that I want. Oh, I I remember now what I wanted to show you on this one. So uh, with the move topological, you also see that I have like these nice kind of like spiking things up a little bit. Uh, this is just using the move topological. Again, this mesh has different polygroups, right? So it would respect the topology. So all I need to do is, you know, position my, my brush, let's say around this area, click and drag, and that will create that sort of spike because it's only moving the first polygroup of the first object that I clicked on. So that's, yeah, that's essentially what I did for all of these spikes that you see in here. Um, the the one for, for the shoulder that are slightly similar, that's just the normal move brush with the AccuCurve. Uh, but that's about it. So let's go ahead and do the, the polypane really quickly, just so that um, I can show you the rendering time. And we are pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to use the standard brush. I'm going to turn off Lazy Mouse and Z Add and also enable RGB. There we go. And I'm also going to uh, change to the skin shade 4. And this is a material that I prefer using so that I don't get that much influence of the kind of like the material itself. So uh, this is a perfect material so that you, um, you know, if you want to do painting or poly painting, this is perfect. All right. So now that I have this, I'm going to start with, you know, a base color uh, could be something like this, you know, very snaky. <laughs> so fill object, same thing for the body. Uh, in fact, if you want, you can just delete them. Uh, what I like to do, in I'd like, I like to keep the originals just in case. So I like to create a new folder, uh, OR, just for originals. And I'm going to drop that in there. And I'm going to hide it so that, yeah, just basically this is what I'm, um, what I'm using to finalize the concept. So the body, um, I'm going to click on Compute. This button that I have here is from a plugin in ZBrush that also comes with ZBrush uh, for the ambient occlusion. So... Uh, what it does is it is using ray tracing to calculate the ambient occlusion. So if I go to the plugin ambient occlusion, this is the button right here. So I just press that uh, with the default settings. And now I can invert the mask holding control, click and invert that mask. I'm going to hide the mask. Um, so all those tools are in. Let me bring in the mask in palette. Um, this one right here. So I can invert the mask from here. I'm going to do that and hide the mask. So view the mask in order to see the colors a little bit better, but still there. And let's switch to color spray or spray. And yeah, this alpha seems to be fine. I'm going to use the same color, but I'm going to tweak it slightly. Just go darker and fill object. 
So right now I'm just filling the the areas protected by that ambient occlusion mask. So I'm going to fill that again, clear the mask, and that gives me a nice starting point to to play around with the with the values. And I can do the same thing for the for the head. Select that, compute, and just wait until ZBrush produces the mask. Invert the mask, hide it, and fill object. There we go. So pretty pretty simple, and now we have an, a nice a nice palette. So um, what I want to do now is establish kind of like the the chunks of color that I want to use. So um, it's kind of like establishing the primary shapes, but just in palette <laughs> or in color. So I'm just uh, I'm gonna play around with this a bit more. So I want to go for um for a lighter color for all this front area of the body, and perhaps like a darker greenish tone the saturated for the for the top and you know all these scales are the, the the rougher area or the rougher part of the skin switch to the to the head to the details do the same thing so yeah basically you see it's this it's really simple really basic um color blockout, but it gives me a, um, a rough idea of what I need to follow, right? Or what it's, um, what are the, the main shapes of color? Um, I think I can also change the, the eyes. I think I did that for the final one anyway, to, you know, like a red color. I switch back to the normal um, behavior of this brush. Just add a bit of tint in there. Right, so that's <laughs> that's my a snake man. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the the final color, so you can see the difference. Here we go. So um, the main difference, really. Let me actually. I'm gonna uh, hold the Shift S just to drop a dro this, drop this model into the canvas. So now it's like a screenshot in there, and go back to the previous one. Right, so it is exactly the same thing. the The main difference, I mean, exactly the same process and and workflow. The main difference is that I use a more contrasted version of the of the palette, and a lot, you know, the the, the saturation is a lot less than what I have here. Uh, but in order to achieve all of these like smaller contrast or variation in color, I use automated mask in ZBrush. So one thing you can do is with the body selected. So again, I'm using this tool. Um, with the body selected, I'm going to click on Adjust Color, and that for you would be under the Polypaint palette. So let's go to Polypaint, and it's this one right here, Adjust Color, and that brings in this new window. And in here, you can just tweak things like if you're familiar with Photoshop, basically, you know, change the color, um, re reduce the saturation. That's what I did. Um, add a bit of contrast, maybe. There we go. Something like that. I mean, it's not the same thing, but you get the idea, right? You can just tweak those colors very easily. Now, I'm going to clear the canvas and show you how I did the, the additional details. So if I go back to the masking palette, I can go ahead and click on these peaks and valleys or, you know, mask by color. There's a bunch of different options in here. So I'm going to click on mask, peaks and valleys, and Siri is going to mask the difference between the peaks that it detects and the valley yeah, and the values of the of the mesh based on the coverage and the range. So you can play around with this, maybe a bit more of the the range, so you can spread it a bit more. And that's it. This is an automated mask, and it creates these nice, almost random um, random colors. I can hide the mask, and I can use a lighter version of this color just to paint something like this, right? And that's exactly what what I did to add those details. Right? Um, and because we have that automated mask, it just gives me this nice sort of variation. And I can clear the mask when, once I'm finished. So that's what I did for the color. And to wrap it up, I'm going to show you how to do a quick pose for this character, because right now this looks boring. <laughs> so um, I'm going to work on a pose that is going to you know, sell the character a little bit better, like the, the idea and the, you know, the background story, maybe. It's a, it's a, it's a tough guy, right? So. Um, Fortunately, we have subdivision levels. So 
I love using this plugin in ZBrush, again, it comes with ZBrush, um, that automatically sends everything to the lowest subdivision level and creates a single tool that allows you to post everything at once. Because right now, if I wanted to move, let's say with the gizmo, the, the body, right? If I want to move um, the body like this, it's only going to move the body and not the rest, right? And I can use this icon to move everything at once, everything that's selected and visible, which is great. But it's really hard to do it um, when you want to just move portions of the mesh. So anyway, that's all to say that it's a lot easier to go to the Z plugin palette, go to the transpose master, and we can go ahead and click on T pose mesh. So T pose mesh is going to look at the lowest subdivision level and it's going to merge everything together into a temporary, um, you know, sub tool. And this is the the mesh that we can. Go ahead and post so i'm gonna rush this process but uh, this is another process that i take um you know that takes me a, a little bit of time just to make sure it's the the right one so if i want to move the the arm down i hold control and mask that out i'm using the mask lasso and just make sure that i grab what i need to grab from the from the arm invert the mask and i'm going to hold control and click on the mask just to blur it a little bit so it's not super harsh and then i can bring in the gizmo right um let's turn this off and i can hold the alt key and that basically allows me to unlock the gizmo uh, or you can click this icon but i'm pressing the alt key just so i can position this in a better place and just for the sake of demonstration i like to change the direction or the rotation sorry of the of the gizmo so i'm going to place this roughly around this area where the you know the shoulder is the acromion process in here and i'm going to place that in the right Play. so I just spent some time tweaking the the rotation and position of the gizmo so that then it's a lot easier to go ahead and do this right I can just move it like so move it a little bit and that's it so that's that's what I want to achieve like um like the shoulder a bit a bit lower than that and of course the the polygons are, little, uh, are stretching a little bit, uh, but that's where I can just go ahead and use the move brush to try to compensate. Um, but don't worry too much about it. I mean, when, when you're using this technique to pose the character, um, it's really hard to, I mean, things are going to be distorted anyway. Uh, and this is like the next part of the process. Once you have the, the actual, you know, uh, pose that you want, or roughly where you want it, you still have to tweak it a little bit. Um, to move things with the with the head and these details, I'll probably use the same technique. So let's just go ahead and mask this out, maybe this area, and then hold control and click on that mask to blur it. Something like that, maybe that's too much. So I can place the gizmo roughly in that area and I can just rotate it um, you know, <laughs> to do whatever uh, pose I want. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Instead, I'm just going to show you the final result with the pose and the polypane. Um, hang on, let's wait until Zerush saves and loads the previous one. Here you go. Oh, one thing I forgot to say is once you're happy with <laughs> with the pose, in order to go back to what you had, is go to the C uh, You have to go to the Zerush C plugin palette and click on T pose to see tool or C post to C, C post to sub tool <laughs> sorry so uh, it's basically taking that tool that has the pose and it's going to apply that pose to every single um, tool I'm not sure if that's gonna do it properly because I just loaded a new tool so I might I might confuse Zerush I don't know that's that's all good <laughs> so you can see it just goes through every single tool or every single sub tool and it applies that uh, that tool so you can just go back to the lowest subdivision level or to the highest subdivision level and continue tweaking that pose so here it is the final mesh so very simple pose but this is kind of like what i'm going for and that's the reason i said you know i'm not to worry about like showing the hands or or the lower torso because this is the only thing that um i had in mind uh to show you for <laughs> for the concept and this is the the final creature all right so just to wrap it up, I'm going to show you a, a very speed up version or sped up version of how I approach the um, the rendering process in Keyshot. Uh, but at this time, you can do anything that you want, uh, as in export this mesh in any any uh, you know any format really, and 
push it into any rendering software that you want. So I just I just gonna use the Keyshot uh, briefly because ultimately that's what I have integrated here uh, myself in in ZBrush, and that's what makes it a lot easier. So I just enable Keyshot. Um, I'm gonna press the PBR button just to send this over. And that's going to take a while because it's going to send about 4 million polygons. I have a relatively good machine, so yeah, that's pretty quick. All right, so now I have the mesh. And the first thing I do is work on the camera. So I'm going to set it to 85 perspective, get closer. And I'm going to click on a new camera, key shot. Let's name this, right-click, rename, call this render. And let's find a better angle here, something like that, right? And let's save that camera. And I also want to lock it. Uh, the other thing we can do is change the materials. So because we come from ZBrush, it comes with the matcap attached to it. Uh, so we can just search for something like skin shade. Let's go for skin in the materials. And if I just click and drag and drop it in here, it's basically going to replace that poly paint that we did. So I'm going to undo that. And instead, I can hold the Alt key and drag and drop it. And that will respect the, the matcap. I want to double click on the matcap. In fact, let's just apply that to the, to the top of the head as well. And let's use a plastic material with, um, with a reflection, something like this. Holding Alt, and I'm going to apply it to the eyes. So we have a nice sharp reflection. And I'm going to double click the skin. And I'm going to go to the textures. And I'm going to upgrade to a new node, and I'm not going to apply the matcap. So now I have like pure, um, pure color without the influence of that matcap that originally uh, that we brought from ZBrush. Let's do the same thing for the R plastic texture. Upgrade to new node. Disable this. Um, once I have this ready, all I have to do is just start working with lighting and you know refining the the rendering <laughs> really. So I'm going to bring in some custom custom um, lighting scenarios that I have. So I like to, to work with some dramatic lighting. I'm going to go to the environment tab, go to the color and just go for a clean, simple black color for the background. And then holding control and click and drag I can rotate around just to position that main, the key light in, a, in an area like so. That's going to give me the, the first, um, you know, the first, the focal point, really, that should be the, the, um, the strongest point, really, in the image or the composition. And let's go to create a new one. And this is just a point light. Whatever I click, Keyshot is going to place that uh, perpendicular to the normal of the mesh. So I just, I'm just going to go ahead and increase this quite a bit so that you can see really what's going on. And I'm going to give it a red color just so that you see what this, um, this light is doing. Maybe reduce the radius. So if I click here at the top, ZBrush is going. To, oh, ZBrush Keyshot is going to put this light perpendicular to that surface. So all I have to do really is just try to get the glazing angle, kind of like the the edge of the mesh, and that's how I can place in that the nice rim light to to highlight the the details of the silhouette, and that sort of breaks the yeah it breaks apart the model from the background nicely. Let's click on done and. Now that we know where it is and what it's doing, um, we can go back to the scene and let's change this to a, a warmer, uh, sorry, a colder tone. And we can increase the radius a tiny bit more and play around with the brightness intensity so it's not as intense. And yeah, that's that's the process. I mean, <laughs> the 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 whole point is just to go um, to concentrate on the design area first and then all the technical aspects can be done in anything i mean you can export this as an fbx and and just run it to a different render engine uh, but the core idea of the concept is in there um, other than this let me just actually show you the the final composition or the final render i'm just gonna drag and drop it in here and i'm just going to open file just so you can see everything that i've set up uh, for the final version. Uh, I think the only difference is that I added a new piece of geometry and added a light. Yeah, so it's so slightly different. Let's go to the free camera. Um, and I also use a 3D connection um, space mouse that allows me to move around like this. So I'm not using the normal mouse. Um, and this free camera, I'm also having the depth of field enabled. So that's something else that you can add. 
and we can also turn performance mode if you want to see things faster but i think it just yeah it just works so if i move back a bit what i have is a like like i just show you i have the background i have a pin light although this one is not even enabled yeah, so I think I enabled it for the final render, but I have the pin light, uh, sorry, I have the background, uh, the environment that I just showed you, the pin light, and this one right here, I'm going to show you how I've done that. Turn it off. All right. So uh, in order to add that kind of like a spotlight, there is another way of uh, lighting things in Keyshot. You can do it from zero. You can just bring in a piece of geometry, but it's, um, it's pretty easy to just go ahead and click on edit, add geometry, cube. It doesn't matter what type of mesh it is. I just added a cube. I'm going to put this up like so. And in the material section, I'm going to type lights. Oops, sorry. Light. And that's pretty much it. I think, oh, actually, I'm just going to go into the light section. <laughs> and I'm going to find something like, like this one, right? This is spotlight one, uh, 120 degrees. Click and drag that into the cube. It's similar to the one that I added, and you kind of like tell where that is. Um, so if I go back to the environment and temporarily set it back to zero and toggle off the other light that I have, this is the influence of that spotlight. So it's not very visible. Uh, so let's go to the material, double click on that spotlight, and we can change what to lumen. Oh, hang on. That's not the one. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna accept that and double click that that um, that light. I think that's the one. Nope. Maybe it's this one. I have to go back to to check what's the what's the right one. Yeah, this is the one. So I'm gonna increase the power, and you see um, as soon as I did that. We have more light coming in. Um, we can change from lumen to watts. So we don't have to apply that much. So I'm going to go for 3,000. 3,000 watts. No, that's too much. 1,500 watts. It may be even lower than that. All right. Yeah, something like this. Um, we can all go ahead and change the radius of that source. So that is going to give you a more diffuse um shadow so it's not as sharp uh, but yeah this is basically an object that if you want you can just go to the scene select it click on the move tool and reposition that whatever you want to so you can light up a scene like this and make it you know pretty pretty dramatic lighting um and that's that's really all there is to it uh, one more thing that i did with the camera just for the final render is i selected the camera went to the depth of fill and you can click on this select focal point and then just click wherever you want to focus. So for a character or a creature like this, um, the main point of interest or what we read as as humans, what we read first is kind of like the expression and the eye. So I'm going to click on the eye and that's it. And yeah, then you can just press with the, play with the F stop to increase that um, depth of fill <laughs> or decrease it. And when once you're done, you click done and there you go. That's that's pretty much it. <laughs> so yeah, it, it takes a while, but um, it's it's all about building the foundation, building the basis uh, of whatever concept, or whatever your creature you want to do. And of course, you you have the ability to polish this to a level, uh, a production level, right? Um, I work with, a lot with concepts, and what I, what I care about concepts is that it kind of like express the idea and it communicates the idea um, or the design, but you know. Once the, the once it's done, I still have the uh, once the concept is done, I still have the 3D mesh, so I can just move into production or send the the base mesh and the and the tools that I have in ZBrush to someone in a production environment, so that they can do a proper retopology for animation or that sort of thing. So hopefully, that's uh, this has been of help. Um, I don't know if there is any questions, but um, yeah, I'm gonna leave it here. Uh, hopefully, this has been of help, and we'll tackle some questions now.